All right, man. What about bringing Spencer Dibwitty back to be the point guard of the now for the Detroit Pistons rather than draft LaMelo, Cole Anthony, or Killian Hayes? Let's get into it. We back. Mercy Sports Talk. We in the building. Hit that subscribe button, bell icon button. Share the video. I think, you know, Spencer in his mid-20s. Um, I mean, he was shining when Kyrie was out, you know, the first time this season. And, you know, the Brooklyn Nets was winning more games than they was winning with Kyrie Irving at the point guard position. Did what he got, you know, great size, great length, a great game. He a great playmaker uh, or good playmaker. He can score it. He can defend. And he's fully recovered from since suffering that knee injury in college. That's why we got him. That's why he fell to the second round because of that knee injury that he suffered. And Stan Van Gundy, seeing the talent, he just didn't want to let the talent, you know, develop. The Pistons just got that really, really bad where no matter who the coach is, you know, unless you Grant Hill or Isaiah Thomas or Joe Dumars or something like that, you're a rookie. You sitting on the bench the first couple of years. And I think that kills more conf most guys' confidence. They should be able to have a role 10 to 15, 20 minutes. But the Pistons just never really believed in, you know, playing younger uh, ball players. You know, like I always say on the channel, Tayshawn Prince came out the deep freezer because they was in panic mode because they had no answer for Tracy McGrady. You know, you brought him in the game. He shut down McGrady. McGrady don't get out the first round ever in his career. Josh Golly G, Tayshawn can play. Yeah, he played four years for Tubby Smith at Kentucky. You know, no matter how much experience or lack of experience a rookie got, the Pistons just don't believe in playing them. Spencer Dibwitty, Aaron Aflalo, um, Chris Middleton, they developed them in practice. They developed them, you know, on the bench or the G League or the D League at one point. And then they go to Milwaukee, they go to Brooklyn, and they flourish. Or they go out to Denver or wherever they go, and they flourish. And the Pistons got to get out that mind state. That's a, that's a 20, that's a 20th and 19th century mindset of basketball. These guys are ready to go. They're ready to get a roll. And I'm happy that they played the young bow and Christian Wood last year. Obviously, they traded Andre Drummond. They refused to get Christian Wood's respectable minutes. And Diambo only got in there because of injury. So, and Civi Malachi only got in there because of injury. So, you know, the injuries did play an important factor of, you know, seeing the future of the Detroit Pistons. But with Didwitty, I would say, you know, I like known commodities. And I think Didwitty is on the up and up. He got two more years and a, a little bit over 11. And then his final 21, 22 season and over 12. I think the Pistons will sign, will, will trade for him and possibly get him extension uh, sooner than later. But yeah, I, I would, I, I would, I wouldn't be mad at that. If the Pistons, you know, say they got the number one pick or whatever, right. And they took Anthony Edwards and they liked him and they put Spencer Didwitty in, in, in the backcourt. I like it, you know, and there's been some talks that they trade. Maybe they get the fifth or fourth pick to Brooklyn for Spencer Didwitty since it's a conflict of interest with Didwitty and Kyrie Irving. You know, and what would they, you know, if we can keep that fourth or fifth pick, what can we get for, you know, uh, what we have to get to get Didwitty? And I would say it would start with Luke Kennard. You know, it might start also be Derrick Rose. Um, you know, so it might be a couple guys they may be looking at uh, to bring in over there. Obviously, Blake Griffin wouldn't be a guy unless he was proven to be healthy. They probably think about, they were always looking to add a third star. Maybe Blake would be a good fit with Kyrie and, and Kevin Durant. If this was the Blake of last year at the All-Star break, they can get that Blake back. Maybe that would be a good move for Brooklyn, but I don't think they'd be looking at Blake Griffin. I think they're more looking at uh, Derrick Rose, Luke Kennard, somebody like that. But if I, you say the fifth pick overall, the fourth pick overall straight for Didwitty, um, you know, and you, you wasn't going to get LaMelo or a guy you really like, man, hey, maybe I'll do it. But it's kind of moving backwards again because you had this dude on your roster. You could have had him and Middleton as your backcourt, but, hey, we all make mistakes. Um, I wouldn't mind having Didwitty here, um, you know, over some of the younger point guards in this draft. But you got to remember, the younger point guards of this draft, you know, ain't no more big big dog Glenn Robinson hundred million dollar contracts as rookies no more. They cheaper, they younger, but you know, can you prove that Lamelo is gonna be as good as Spencer did what he is? You really can't prove that at this point. But one thing he will do is he will fill up the stadium and he will give you national televised games. So if you're talking about as far as a marketing standpoint, if you can get him, you know, then yeah. But if you get the number one or two pick, I don't think that's enough. If I'm trading the number one or two pick to Brooklyn for Spencer Dinwiddie. Hey, I'm going to need Karis Avert, too. 
And I'm going to need your first round pick whenever y'all got one this year, next year. So it's a different dynamic. Now, if it's a fifth, sixth, seventh pick, and maybe you don't like Killian or Cole Anthony as much, then I, I would do it. I'm definitely for bringing them back, you know, because he's interchangeable. He can guard ones. He can guard twos. He's a playmaker. You know, he would have got the most out of drumming. He can shoot. He can score. He can do everything you need him to do. And I think right now, I think he's ready to bust through his ceiling. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, and I think he's ready to become an all-star. So I think you get an all-star if everything goes right. And it's still young. So you say, you you know, and you just got to, you know, if you're able to keep that draft pick, it's important. It's a, it's a uh, foreign kid that's pretty good that's out there as well, too. Um, you got Obi. You got James Wiseman. You know, you got um, you got to bring Christian Wood back as well. But there's some guys out there. Anthony Edwards, he may slide. He may rise. He may fall. He may stay the same. So if they able if they able to get a top pick, they able and the Pistons have never moved up in the draft with their own pick. That pick we got for Darko was was well, for Darko was Orlando, and if it was the number one pick that year, it would have stayed. Would have went to Orlando, and LeBron would have been in Orlando instead of Cleveland. You know, but with Dinwiddie, I'm all for bringing him back. You know, if we can get him without giving up our draft pick, that'll be huge. And I know Brooklyn is looking to bring in a third star. I think they would love to have uh, Derrick Rose to back up Kyrie Irving. I think they would like to have Luke Kennard to shoot the ball out there. But they're looking for that third star I heard. And I don't know exactly who would they be looking for to bring in there. You know, maybe the Pistons have to get a three-team de deal to bring a DeMarcus Cousins. I mean DeMarcus Cousins. Or De uh, DeMar DeRozan there. Or somebody like that. But I don't, I don't, I'm not sure exactly what they are looking for um, as far as the third star. But, you know, we can get, without giving up the pick, we can give them Luke Kennard and Derrick Rose for Spencer Dinwiddie. You know, if they want something else, I don't know who else, you know, they would want. But we can give them that and give what Spencer Dinwiddie. And we give them a future one if that's what they want. But I'm all for bringing Dinwiddie back. But if you can keep the pick, if you can get Edwards and Dinwiddie, you know, people ask, can you play LaMelo with, uh, with Spencer Dinwiddie? That's a great question. I think you can play those two together. They are interchangeable. You know, you're not dealing with no combo guards that's 6'3", 6'4", 6'2", or like Damian Lillard and, and C.J. McCollum. With their length, all they need is a little bit of motivation. When LaMelo needs some motivation to play defense, you can interchange them. You know, they can guard ones and two. So you can play LaMelo with Spencer Dinwiddie. So that's a, a possibility. If you can keep that number one pick, that's a possible or a top pick. That's a possibility, you know. You could pay Dinwiddie with Cole Anthony if you wanted to, but I think LaMelo is more of a, a natural two than, you know, Cole Anthony is with his size, his length, his height. So you can have two guards back there that's just interchangeable. You can have your version of McCullum and Lillard, but they just longer, you know, and they just taller, and they should be better on the defensive end. So, yeah, like I said, the possibilities are endless, and I think Dinwiddie is ready to bust out and be a, be an all-star. And the only thing stopping him is Kyrie Irving. So I think he's ready to move on from, from Brooklyn, and I think he get a big contract. I think he'd be an all-star first, first year with Detroit, especially if Blake Griffin is able to come back healthy. That that This team might turn around quicker than we know, you know, quicker than we know. And I'm just so happy to see where this team is at right now. We finally rebuilding through the through the draft. But if it's, say, bringing Diddy back, and you keep that pick somehow, some way, you know, you turn a, a, a bad situation with Luke Kennard into a great one, or you could turn Derrick Rose and send him over there. Now I'm all for it. You know, and you 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 young, you know, you athletic, you would be long, and you would be a team that's probably gonna make the playoffs in the near future. You know, if Blake can come back and be healthy, and you can manage Blake health down the line, the pist the Pistons probably make the playoffs next year in the East, in my opinion. But, hey, let me know what you guys think about bringing Dinwiddie back. Um, it's, it's being an optimist to uh, hope that we can keep that pick um, and get Dinwiddie via trade. But it may take a third team. It may take a future pick. But I see a lot of possibilities with Dinwiddie. He's an interchangeable guy. He can play the one. He can play the two. He can guard some threes. He can play the three. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. But let me know what you guys think. Don't forget we on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. All the links in the description. If you have a business question, quiet response, if you have a question, just want to chop it up. Looking at this hawk flying <laughs> or eagle. But uh, other than that, man, uh, don't forget to check my other channel out, Goodfellow Sports TV, for more sports, music, news, and entertainment right here on YouTube, Goodfellow Sports TV. 
Also, in addition to that, don't forget to check the podcast out. The link's in the description. We have not got accepted to Apple Music yet, so I'm waiting on that acceptance email to come. I'll check on that when I get off. Uh, Want to make a donation? Cash at PayPal there. Appreciate the love, support, one time for the one time. And check out our Detroit Piston playlist for more videos like this. We out.